Thank you for listening here to part two of our interview with Shelby Boss Lady Lofton. Without further ado, the Bloodthirsty Salamander experience is going to get right where we left off. Yeah, one of the things I think they don't really talk about is one... Again, I don't like the hokey references, but like when you're breaking out of the matrix and you're moving from employee minded, because that's literally what we're programmed from the time we start school is you go to school and this is your schedule nine to, you know, eight to five or eight to three. And this is your lunch break. And that like, they literally get you ready to be. Yeah. I like to say worker bees. Yes. Like you're being trained to be a worker bee. Yeah, from day one. But when you're kind of breaking out of that, like you start to look around and one, you're penalized, which is fucked up and it pisses me off. But number two, like you, you don't know what to do. You really don't know your whole, everything that you know, your schedule, what you think you should be doing productivity wise, all of that. Like there's no, you can go listen to, you know, and speakers on YouTube, but there's, there's nothing there. So I like, yeah, it's a, a lot of a lot of fear and doubt because it's outside of the norm of what yeah. you've been taught. But let's jump back uh, because you guys were living in Oklahoma. We used to hang out, go to the lake, you know, all this fun stuff. And then one day you're like, "Hey, uh, by the way, uh, we're gonna move to Florida." Right. We're just loading up our shit and selling our house and going. I mean, that was the goal, but I mean, there's no, like, you guys didn't have family there. You didn't have friends there. Like, there was no ties to there. You just, like, it's like you threw a dart at the map and we're like, that's where we're going. No. And then you were, and then you were gone. Okay. So, yeah, just, like, expand on that and, you know, tell us what went into that decision. Well, so Trevor and I went through a really rough patch and I filed for divorce and we were separated and all the stuff that we went through and all of that. But in that kind of same time frame, a little bit before I had started traveling to Clearwater because Allegiant started flying there super cheap. And I think Trevor and I, had- right. Right. So sorry. No, but it's, that's literally it. it's like $90 round trips. Yes. I loved it. Trevor and I, for our, one of our anniversaries, flew to Tampa or St. Pete. I think it was 250 bucks round trip for us to go, for us to fly there. And we got a hotel and had the fucking best time before shit went downhill. Um, we really struggled after we had case in two, which is really, I mean, I didn't really say this. It's probably a given, but we've been together now 16 years. And Kids are hard. Kids are hard. And then if, if for whatever reason they're difficult... Which I've seen Kaysen as a little kid, and that kid it was difficult. I, he was difficult for whatever reason, whatever you wanted to do, ask him to do. He had no interest in being part of the Matrix <laughs> from the start. Nope. He really isn't. So we struggled really hard, and I we lived on separate households for like almost a year, actually, and it was kind of in that same time. I had been working at a local paint distributor for seven or eight years, and he had been with that mechanical contractor for 10 years. And I just honestly looked around one day. And when I say like really looked around, I was stopped like dead in my tracks. And I hate the term. I felt like I woke up, but I don't know another way to say it other than I looked around And I said, is this it? Is this life as I know it? I'm married. I go to work. I get my two weeks vacation a year. I, you know, buy all the toys and spend my whole week just living for the weekend. Like, this is it. This is all there is to life. Like, this, and I was like, I'm not doing this. Like, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) honestly. And so we had been traveling there, and there was one year where I was in. Destin, Fort Lauderdale, St. Pete, Naples. I was everywhere. I was in Florida, I think, five times that year. And I looked at him before I moved back and we reconciled and spent $4,000 on therapy. Good for you. (laughs) It worked. Good. Um, But I said, I'm moving to Florida. I'm moving to Florida. And and whether you come with me or not, I'm going. And he said, well, you're not taking my son. And I was like, well, yes, I am. So he, I'm going, 
boss and lady. he said he wasn't he wasn't on board for a long time but then he finally got on board and then he was the one that was like ready to go before i was ready to go so then it was like well yeah i think it's you threw that idea at him right and because like you said we get so stuck in our ways and we're programmed to think of a certain way. I mean, moving mm -hmm. across the country seems crazy. Like, yeah. but the longer it sat in his head, you know, the more it it's made like, sense. Oh, the more it, it made sense. And so like, by the time you guys are ready to go, he's like, uh, what are we waiting on? <laughs> I'm done. I'm getting out of here. And that's really like that. That's what prompted it. But what's crazy is when I, the one school that I remembered really wanting to go to in high school, but again, I thought I was nuts and that it would never happen to me and all that other stuff was I wanted to go to the University of Miami. And my mom even told me too, she goes, you used to say as a kid, you wanted to go to Florida and like be in Florida. So I don't know what it is about here. And if you want to hear something even more freaky, I had, <laughs> I found some of my old school work. And I was like a sophomore or junior and we had to do stupid poetry, but I had a poem and it literally had my date Trevor in it. No way. Yes. Like I named Trevor and like. And that was pre-Trevor, right? That was pre-Trevor. That like, I knew who Trevor was, but we didn't talk and he went to another school and all of that. Like Ooh, subconscious matrix. And you, the, the idea of you and Trevor as a couple it just, it doesn't sound no. right, right? Like, when you look at the two of you from the outset, like, you would have never thought, oh, Trevor and Shelby, that, that'd right. make a good match. <laughs> like, like, completely. It was, I like, when you guys were dating in the beginning, it was so yeah. weird to me. And just a, a little bit on our history, like, I knew you in high school. Right. But we weren't really friends in high school. Right. Uh, but, like, I became good friends with Trevor. Mm -hmm. And then... That's really where our relationship picked up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just because uh, me and Trevor were best friends. And so we're always around each other at that point. And, and now we probably talk more than, <laughs> than me and Trevor talk. But Trevor doesn't talk a lot to people. He doesn't. I was going to say. It's really. Like just Jose. <laughs> it's just Jose. <laughs> Jose practically <laughs> lives with us. So. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was. That's really it. I don't I don't like to say I woke up, but I really don't know another term for it. And so now we're here in 2018 and 2019, in part of 2022, it really was. I I don't tell a lot of people about it. Um, and there's a lot to be said that's it's becoming more of a thing now, but Trevor and I both struggle with our own mental health issues because I've got bipolar, schizophrenia, ADHD, like all of that runs in my family and I have an anxiety disorder and all of that. And then he's got his own thing going on and coming down here, it's been one of the hardest things we've ever done and we've ever had to live through. Um, it seems to be that that hurdle has created the most success you've ever been involved in. Yes. Yes. And so that's, um, kind of the thing is we've stuck with it as much as I want to quit. I think I've quit loft and plumbing probably 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> it happens at least once a month where I'm like, I'm done. I'm done talking to you. If you want to run this business, you run this business. I'm not doing it because I'm not, you know me, I'm not a yes person. I'm not just going to sit here and do accounting and it's not how this works. No, you're not going to be just Trevor be like, Hey, do it this way. Do it that way. And you'd be like, Oh, oh yeah. And it's like, no, I'm, you are, I'm doing it and I'm doing it my right. way. And we're, we butt heads. And I look back too, and had we not had the jobs that we had, and had we not gone through what we went through as a couple, we would not have survived this together, period. And there are still days where it's really freaking hard. And it's like, why are we doing this? But then it's like, well, I work from home and I virtually school Kaysen and Kaysen and I are able to go to Disney World. We're going next week for two days. So we're able to go to Disney whenever we want. We are able to go to Universal whenever we want. We're able to drive to Orlando like we did after Thanksgiving and hop on a trip to Jamaica. And I paid $300 round trip for us three to fly direct there. Beautiful. 
Like, there's not that opportunity in Oklahoma. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, as, I, as I'm up here for like a lease of where I'm going to go, it's like, do I stay here in Dallas? Do I honestly go to Cocoa Beach or do I go back to Oklahoma? And it's like, I, I don't know. I don't I know. know. Cause Dallas has an amazing opportunity, amazing, like different opportunities. Cause it's a ma yes. major mo metropolitan area with so much more than I've ever even dreamed of. Cause it took me a year of doing insurance of where I was just more of coming out of pandemic, my mom passing away and just, just our own brain fog. And it was like, oh, I'm going to put my name out there. And then all these different places hit me up. And I was like, holy shit, you're going to pay me how much? Like, holy heck. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, hell, let me break out from under the rock I've been living in for two years and, and get back into it. And then now I'm in it and everything is still so remote. And I'm, I'm, Stephen will hate to hear this, but I'm really debating on moving to Florida in the next month. Also, girlfriend, don't hear this. Ignore that statement. <laughs> right. You didn't hear this. I mean, yeah, I, I've been pitching he come back to Oklahoma just so we can do the podcast uh, from a, a central location. Yeah. But it's it's all good. I mean, we're doing it fine remote. So, I mean, whether it's in Florida or, or Texas, uh, just one more reason for me to go to Florida more often. So, I mean, I'm not going to be mad about that. You should live close to Shelby. <laughs> Just saying, that's a good area, and I can kill two birds with one stone when I come out there. Yeah, that's now Florida's crazy, and it comes with its own set of issues. Like it's not perfect here. Absolutely, but I, I honestly, I felt way more comfortable in Florida than I do in Texas by any means. Oklahoma by far, like it just is the only place. Like last weekend, I was in California Beautiful. or in San Francisco, and it was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was just too much for me. Like I didn't like all of that people living on top of each other type of mentality. And it was like, fuck today. I got a Whopper. That shit cost me $10. I don't remember the last time a Whopper cost me 10 fucking dollars. And I know I got in and out, which is bullshit meat. Right. And that was $12 I, for one fucking meal. And I know <sighs> I'm not going to talk about politics on this, but I will say that I love my governor and I did get to meet him. And that was amazing. Um, Daddy, Daddy Santas. Santas. <laughs> but I think that's just, you know, I don't I play teams. I don't, I, I think that the whole thing is a way to divide us and that we need to really overthrow the government at this point. <laughs> Dude, at some point, like we really need to have just a whole community upheaval of what we're experiencing because nobody's happy, no, I feel like. No, But yeah. if I had to pick a governor, I would pick mine simply because he stands for a smaller government. He stands for less government interference. And I'm like, I can get behind that. So, yeah. And I think I had told you too, but like if, if I didn't have mm -hmm. kids uh, after my divorce, I would have moved to Florida and started working for Trevor and got my feet under me and yesterday maybe moved on from there. But like, I would, I would definitely be living in the same area you are if it wasn't for kids, mm -hmm. you know, cause obviously I'm not going to take off and leave right. my kids cause their mom's here. But I, I just, what it, the, where you live and open the, the way it seems, it's just, you're so close to the beach. You're so close to anything. You're an hour from mm -hmm. Tampa. Like, you know, it doesn't take any time to get to like Bush gardens Disney World, whatever. You're allowed to be yourself, I think, to me, is the biggest thing. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, I can get off work and go chill at the beach for a couple hours if I want. Like, and I don't. I don't go because the boys really don't care for the beach, but that's – I still – Your long-haired hippie son don't care for the I beach? I know. One of those beautiful kid stories. When I go visit, me and Shelby go to the beach. Right. I, when I have visitors in town, I'm like, okay, bye. And I leave them and I'm like, let's go guys. I, I have my fun there. And they like, well, Kason doesn't like going out on the boat either, but Trev, Trev likes taking the boat out too. So that's kind of. Dude, hell, I would love taking the boat. Oh my God. He's it's a awesome. kid. Like it's, that's really it. <laughs> taking their boat out is, is pretty sweet. It's gorgeous out there. Like yeah. I've rented a couple of boats to go out there and just fuck around, find different sandbar mm -hmm. islands. Like, oh, dude, it's just, it's nothing but magical. Like, I have no other way to describe it for myself. It's like, it's magical. I absolutely loved it. They have a nude island by them, too. 
Then I'm we nude do. everywhere. <laughs> Naked Island. You, uh, the Apollo Beach area? Well, this is actually just south. It's Passage Key. And so it's like okay. Egmont Key, then Passage. And Passage is where they all go. And we didn't know that the first time we were there. And I saw so many, like, dicks. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. He's Never. naked. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, this is the best place to honestly find sand dollars and, like, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, and- I'm sure that's what you're looking for natural <laughs> just be prepared for naked but i that's the thing i feel like we're in such a little hidden pocket like where we landed is where we are going to stay because we are so close anna maria is gorgeous yeah i would i would much rather magical. at this point go to anna maria than i would destin like destin yeah. just so busy yeah uh yeah. But like it's just it, it reminds me of an older destin when i first started going Yes. Before it was just yeah. like so stupid busy. I know. And that I haven't been to Dustin in their busy season. I've only ever been in like November. And I can't even imagine what that's like. So yeah. I no, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I will never come back unless I'm forced to for whatever reason. And now I feel like going along with the success of everything. But yeah, let's let's dive a little bit more into loft and plumbing. Yes, and get a little bit more where it started and where it where it's grown to. So started in 2018, and we formed the business technically in September, but he did not pass his licensing and test and actually become a contractor until November of that year. And he was working full time for a mechanical contractor here locally. Um, And then that guy kind of let him handle his own. But it was really like part time loft and plumbing, full time this guy. And then he was ending, he was working every day. And uh, it was April of 2019. When he finally was like, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep doing both. And so that's when he went full time with Loft and Plumbing and really took the leap. And at that time, it was only him. Like, I helped form the business. I did the documents, articles, LLC, set us up, QuickBooks, all of that stuff. And I would help him where I could. But for the most part, it was him on his own because I was trying to build my real estate business too. And I was working part time and full time and all of that. And weren't you uh, working for a tile company at the same time? So I actually had multiple jobs once I moved here because like I was bored when I first moved to Florida and I was like working the front desk at LA Fitness for a couple months because I was bored. I'm making like $10 an hour. And I was like, I'm just doing this because I'm bored of shit, guys. And I'm here to meet people. And I've actually met a lender doing that, that I still do business with today. And it was my first podcast that I'd ever been on was his podcast. So it's like, it's crazy how that works out. So Loft and Plumbing started from nothing, started from no family, no friends, no sphere, no nothing. Um, And it kind of coincides with me getting my real estate license at the same time, because I started with KW um and got my license in 2018 started with kw got fed up because i don't align with what they teach um you didn't want to drink the red kool-aid nope not drinking that at all and i went to my broker that i'm at now and i was in there with him and i said they're they're literally i don't have a sphere here i don't have family i don't have friends i can't i can't rely on them to start my business and they're just preaching cold calling to me. So I'm not I'm not going to do that. If being a real estate agent is cold calling people and being a telemarketer, that is not why I'm in real estate. And that's not what I'm going to base my business on. And that's not what I'm going to do. So if that's what this is, I'm out. I'll just let my license go and move on. And he goes, Shelby, no. I want you in every single group and out of the office but you need to be out talking to people, getting to know people, be in every group that you can be in, buy a boat, you know, who buys houses, people who own boats, get a boat. Get a boat. <laughs> <laughs> we did do that too. Um, but that advice um, snowballed into, like I got on Meetup and I started networking in all these groups face-to-face. And I was working part-time and then, you know, the anxiety and stuff kicked in 
Um, I was in debt because I still had bills. I had my car to pay. I had all of that. I had credit cards debt that I needed to take care of. So I got a full-time job. That being said, I would work full-time. I would network five days a week. And then it was easier for me to network as the plumbing person than the real estate person because there's so many realtors in Florida. It's like so it's such a saturated market. Yep. Realtors sometimes kind of get a persona perception about them. Yes. So you come off like you automatically getting a pass as the plumber person, as right. a more person, like being looked at more as a person. And not versus, a used car salesman. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And so I was then pushing the plumbing business. And then from there, it was refining the skill of networking. And I would say 90% of our success in the market now is because of the networking that I did in 2019. And it stopped uh, quarantine 2020. Um, I really How scaled it back. How much would you say? Huh, 90%. Okay. 90%. 90%. Because what, and, and obviously Trevor's work is what kind of finalizes the sale. It's like, I was out there getting us business, but there is an art to that. You can't just go to a group yeah. and hand out cards and say, hey, I'm the, no. You have to make a physical, like there's gotta be an effort behind getting to know these people, these business owners. And I found that the more, this goes along with mindset too, I operate out of abundance mindset and not a scarcity mindset. There's mm. enough out there for everyone. Um, and the more that I gave and the more that I referred other people, the more they remembered me and referred me. And so then it was, you know, going to those networking groups, really doing the one-on-ones, getting ma making friends with them on Facebook, wishing them happy birthday, calling out their business, getting to know them as a person. And now I, you know don't have to do all of that anymore. It's really natural because Trevor's quality of work um, stands for it's, itself. Yeah. And you guys make a team, like yeah. a really good team in that is you brought in all the business yeah. and, and he went out there and did great work Yeah, and people word of mouth. I mean, after yeah. you kind of got that networking going, it's, it's word of mouth. And I mean, word of mouth is, truly one of the best ways to continue a business, especially in that field, mm -hmm. because like my dad and uncle, like their business is super strong. And, you know, if you're building at walls and, and high end housing in mm -hmm. Tulsa, which is a pretty big market, you're calling my dad, like right. the least that you can get, if you can get, get him out there yeah. and, uh, they've never did anything but word of mouth. And that's the thing. Like I'm even in Sarasota word of mouth. It's like a Facebook group. And so social media for us is huge, but it's also having that presence in social media and responding and talking to people on the weekends. And it really was, I, I feel like now I look at social media as my job because that's, I get a lot of business there and I, I work on it constantly. Um, but without it, I it would be, it would have been a lot harder um, for us. But I can say like I had to scale back because Trevor was getting so overwhelmed that he was starting to have a mental breakdown. <laughs> and that's when I started kind of taking over more of everything, the phones, the scheduling, the everything. Um, but we were able to start at zero. We started at zero in 2018. In 2019, we did six figures and we have doubled year over year. And this year, we've already doubled what we've done last year. And, and we did that back in October. Um, and and the company has grown uh, employee-wise as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, we went from just Trevor to Trevor, an apprentice. Uh, we have a service van, service guy. And now my brother works for us, too. So he's our newest, greenest plumber. And, and I have an assistant. I had an assistant earlier this year because virtually school. I, I chose to keep Kaysen in virtual school this year for multiple reasons, but um, you add that on top of the real estate and on top of the plumbing business. And I was like, I need help. I can't, I can't keep doing this by myself. 
Oh, I'm losing my yeah, shit. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Does your assistant help you with everything or just like just the plumbing just, side? Just the plumbing side. I was really, really grateful. I had a good friend that I had known for years and years who wanted to change and she had the ability to do it. So when we moved into this house, I bought a camper and put it next to the house and she lived in that. And so she was like right there. And so she helped me with the plumbing business, but then she was also helping me with Kaysen and she was also helping me around the house, which is a thing in itself. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause I imagine being a mom, being uh, running your own business and building that clientele mm -hmm. plus running a whole nother business. Uh, and then being a wife on top of that, like and that a housewife. A, now, now I'm a housewife yeah. too. <laughs> that is a huge plate to uh, take care of. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. the networking doesn't usually operate through eight to five. Like in my experience, it's always after hours, before lunch. Like there's nowhere that's just like, oh, cool, I'm gonna eight to five it, and I'm gonna network and get all the things that I need to. Like that's what I was telling Stephen actually earlier today. Like yeah. uh, as I recruit. Because it is for me cold calling. Yes. I get most of my business from four to six. Like during yes. the day, like I'm just messing around. Like I'm just, I could play Fortnite all day. I could do whatever I want until like four to six is when I'm actually getting all my candidates because the people I'm trying to hire work. Are getting off work. Five. Yeah. They're well, yeah. They, they, just, they work their full time jobs. Like I'm doing physical therapy and occupational therapy. They're doctors of some sort. And it's like they work eight to five. But after yeah. that, Heck, that's when I make my money. That's when it goes. And I just kind of mess around through the day, uh, just doing whatever. But it work at home. It's remote. <laughs> really? No, but it, it's true. And it's it's so it's such a different thing working from home, even too. And I again I nobody tells you how to break out of that social conditioning that you need to be up at seven and showered and at your desk and you need to be dressed and you need to like and you literally are like, I'm not showering until noon now, but yeah. I'm a lazy shit because of that. Yeah. But I'm really not. I'm actually still really productive and it took me months. Yeah, even Trevor, he doesn't even start before like nine o'clock, does he? Well, and that has gotten better. He's been getting up. He gets up at 7.45 now. And they're out the door by 8.30. Nice. So, but okay, still. moved up a little bit. Yeah. It's all yeah. But that's a little bit early. But that, but kind of that mindset that you're talking about was you got to be up. You got to be working by seven. You got to be on the road by six. Like right. be showered or whatever. Because I swear it's like, or even earlier, or working as soon as it's daylight. Yeah. Like, because right. I was, it was a cookie cutter There's corporate life. It was like, oh, cool. You're in the office at eight, doing this. You got your tie on and all this extra stuff. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I kind of thrive in that energy. Uh, it just works for me right but now. But why do you thrive in that energy? Well, uh, because that's what you've been socially like conditioned to. I find like, it easy. literally because I I don't find it too much thinking outside the box, and I can get it done. And then True. you know, seven o'clock comes around, and then that's kind of where like my entrepreneur part kind of thrives. Like Makes I feel sense. like it's providing me all the nice things that I have, but it's not providing me the extra things that I want. Right. And Justin is also a people person. So having that, yeah, I think that yeah. human interaction for him is a big thing. Huge. Cause I was doing the networking for the large companies because I don't have the college degree. I feel like I'm definitely not the, the, normal person in the corporate environment who succeeds mm -hmm. and I succeeded and I really thrive on that for some reason. I, I, I think it's because I'm so, I, I guess, as you said it and what Grant said in the other one is breaking away from it hasn't proven beneficial for me. So I've gone back into it and it's been more beneficial than breaking away Yeah, because when I broke away, it just never worked out for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where it kind of brings me back into it because it works for me. But I have all this energy and all this thought and all this entrepreneur spirit, but I never get to take the dream and apply it to the ground. I think the big thing to that, though, is like, one, you, we don't know. And I can't tell you how much I battled and was at war with myself on a daily basis of... I'm not going to make it. I'm not doing what I should be doing. I don't know what I should be doing. I'm spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to make rent. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally like everything I could think of 
was fighting against me and I had to fight myself on a daily basis and I still even do it. Like, I'm like, I still don't know that I'm doing this shit right. Like, <laughs> Hey, as long as those paychecks are coming in and the money keeps going up, I mean, you're doing something right. Right. Well, and so, but that's the thing, like, but that didn't start happening until it was two years. And especially in my real estate, I can't tell you how many times I was like, maybe this just isn't for me. Like, maybe this is just, Maybe, maybe I'm not. What were your real estate numbers this past year? 5 million this year. And I did a million the year before. And I had done, I did 150,000 my first year. And now you're at 5 million. Yes. Like that is fucking killing so it. She's definitely making over six figures at 3%. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to the plumbing company. In addition to yes. Yeah. Which she mentioned is making six figures and has doubled. So, um, you so it's guys working, are, but, but yeah. I, I say that, I mean, we still have expenses like, you know, like, absolutely. That's, yeah. That's not it all doesn't profit. profit. Like, yeah, that's doesn't yeah, to like, uh, right. I mean, you gotta pay, you gotta pay three other employees. Yeah. Um, so. You work for Lofton plumbing for free, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the thing though, is like, no, but nobody tells you like how hard it's going to be like and no nobody there's not even how i can't even explain to anyone like your struggle is going to be your own struggle but it was it is the hardest thing that i've ever had to do in my life and i fight and i fought and i was sick and i you know what i'm saying like i word that you just and it wasn't, just, I was just like, keep chugging, keep doing what I got to do. And that's why there were, there was in 2019, I was working eight to five and then networking, um, six, seven, eight o'clock at night, not coming home four or five nights out of the week and still selling houses that year. So again, thought I was not doing anything fucking right because I was $20,000 in credit card debt. And I was like, I'm fuck i'm fucked i'm fucked i don't know what i'm doing this is not gonna end well and then 2020 was okay and i was like all right we're gonna be all right i just need to keep chugging along and then 2021 it's like whew, i can take a breath this is hell going yeah. to work out yeah so but it's been it's been hell and it's been hell and even <laughs> and it's been the most success like the most rewarding hell that i've ever been through but <laughs> No, that's like that's the same thing like Seth and Grant were saying. I mean, it's definitely all been worth it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like the stress of trying to do it is also unique because it's nobody else telling you to do it. You're not having to not only deal with the stress of your internal like communication, but like where I'm at, somebody else or four other people are like, Justin, do more, and I'm like, Nah, dude, I ain't gonna do that much more. Like, I'm very comfortable with what I'm doing and the pace that I'm doing it. And if it was just me. I'm really freaking happy with the money I'm bringing right. in. Uh, but they're like more, 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 more. But uh, it's wild to think about that. There's nobody else telling you, you have to do more. Like it's all based on your own intuition, your own energy, your own wants, your own desires, your own inspiration and motivation to get to that next step and keep it going, which is absolutely inspiring. Uh, Cause I think, like pre pandemic, I, I had broke away to try to do my own marketing company or I had a cannabis marketing agency mm -hmm. that went cool. I just kind of gave it over to the husband and wife because there wasn't enough business and everybody was paying in weed. And I was like, look, I need mm -hmm. money. And they're like, well, we're affluent. We will take weed. Right. like our affluent family will take care of our housing and kid expenses. And I was like, that's not how my life works. I, <laughs> I need you guys to give me money because we don't pay my fucking bills. Then keep my lights right. on. And then I worked for a radio company. And then I was learning through all these different things that like I could make the money, I could get it going. And so I was like, screw this. I'm going to go do it myself. And I had partnered with like a, a local Tulsa marketing agency mm -hmm. and was bringing in some business. And then I swear to God, like two weeks later, it was like, and COVID started shutting down all of the companies because it was more family entertainment, restaurants, tattoo shops. And I was like, dude, that is, that is 99, if not a hundred percent of my clients. Oh my God. And uh, then it was like down and I was like, oh, I don't even know what to do. And so it was like the weirdest, toughest time for me to actually gain the confidence to break away and be more what I wanted to try mm -hmm. and do to just kind of be like kicked in the teeth 
a few times. <laughs> then it was like, you know what's easy? Literally. Yeah, like also literally, not figuratively, but literally. <laughs> and I was like, what I, I don't know. That's why I'm in Dallas right now doing or I was doing insurance. And then now I'm back into their healthcare recruiting, but in my own pace. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the only benefit of it is like, I'm at my own pace. Cause previously it was like, Oh, I'm working for somebody telling me blah, 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 blah here right now. Like this is my biggest week ever. Like this is, this is one of those, like, I know by the end of 2022, like I am well over six figures nice. for working with somebody else and knowing that I'm doing nine to six, taking an hour lunch. I have that aspect to keep my lights on right. and it's comfortable to yes. me in a weird sense to where I have the energy to do this podcast, to do other things that I think I'm going to grow into as this progresses to really try to coach or help other people market or advertise their business. But I don't have to like take a huge leap right now. Like I'm, I'm really good at what I do. So it's pretty yeah. comfortable. And I think that there's something to be said about that comfortability. And that's why I worked like I worked because I would have, I did not like working as much as I was working. I didn't because I was working at least 80 hours a week at one point and I hated it, but it was all because of that comfortability and that security of having that paycheck. And you're talking about when you were back in Oklahoma, correct? No, I was, it was 2019, 2019. Okay. I was working full time. And I worked full time from like February to November oh, okay, okay. of 2019. Again, didn't know what I was doing. And to me, it was comfort. I had that payment coming in every week so that I made sure I could pay my bills. And then I was doing everything I could outside of work um, to build and keep everything going. And it finally got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going part time. And that's when I moved to the title company. It was November of 19. And I worked with the title company until this year, part time, because it was just, I was like, hell, that's how I get my lashes done. Like, yeah, honestly, right? It's like, that's how I bought my skateboards. It's <laughs> right. Like, I, like, I'm a condition, I like, and Trevor and I keep our finances a little bit separate when it comes to like real estate business and all that. It's like, I'm a commission based. It's your money. So, I, you know, that was nice to have. And now it finally got to the point, though, where I was like, oh, my God, I, didn't, I don't even have time to even think about what I need to be doing for them. Even if it only takes me an hour a day, it was still one of those things where I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't keep doing it. This isn't, it's not worth my time anymore, um, time and effort. But there's definitely something to be said about that. And that's the why that, that's why I did it the way that I did it was to ease my own anxiety. Um, Good. But it can be done. And that, I think that's, I don't see myself as a success story. I feel like I'm in a battle every single day. It's like, yeah, we're successful numbers wise right now. We just, there's a lot of growing pains. There's a lot of things. And I'm like, this has been hard so far. It's been worth it. That's why I keep doing it. But I don't, when people say that stuff about me, I'm like. Well, I'll say it for you. You and Trevor are a success. And while you may not be where you ultimately want to be, that does not mean you guys are not a success. You may not be willing to accept that right now because you're not where you're eventually going, but you guys are right. definitely a success. Yeah, because every day of those battles, it seems like you're winning those battles every day. Yeah. I try. It's, But some days I don't do shit. I can tell you that right now. There are some days where I wake up and I'm like, I'm not doing this today. Good. You earned it. Do yeah. You have the power to make that decision. You run your own two yeah. businesses. Yeah. yeah. Right. I was like, no, I'm going to do the absolute bare minimum today. And outside of that. Like, case, case and get in the fucking car. We're going to Disney World. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Earned it. I'm going to Disney. Like, okay. <laughs> like, that's literally what it is sometimes because they'll be it talking is. to you or and we'll be talking about whatever politics, social, whatever. And you'll be like, oh, I'm at Disney World right now. And yeah. I love that you guys, like, you work hard and you play hard. Like, yeah. you you still have your girls weekend. Your girls come to visit you and y'all go to Disney World, whatever. You know, yes. I think your best friend was just in town recently. Yes. And I think that's, I was, I was talking to you and you're like, oh, we're at Epcot or somewhere like that. And then I... <laughs> Then I go to like Snapchat or something and you got all your stories posted. Yeah. You guys are just out having a good time. So like, 
You guys definitely do it right. And I would not make it. That's that's the thing. Like, uh, you ask, like, how do you handle all of that? I feel like, because, too, I am the financial person in the household, too. So there, I don't have a partner that's, like, actively involved in opening accounts and planning for our future and stocks. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not that paying the mortgage. Like, I handle everything. Taxes, bills, groceries. I do all of it. And then... Well, I mean, Trevor rat holes. He, he does like to take the cash and put it where I can't find it. <laughs> he does like to I do mean, that. that's somewhat financially responsible, right? Yeah, he pays his truck payment. He does do that. And then the businesses and everything that goes along with businesses. And then Kaysen and everything that goes along with that. But I have a group of five women, six women now, that we've been friends for seven or eight years that we kind of formed the group when we worked together um, back in the day. And it has stuck. It's been the same group chat for, I think, I think we're going on seven or eight years now. But without them, that having that support system and having that ability, like literally yesterday, I was like, I need to get the hell out of here for a couple of days. What are we going to do? And Emily goes, don't tempt me with a good time. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, I'll fly to Oklahoma City on this weekend and you meet me there and I've got the hotel covered and that's what we're going to do. And she was like, what weekend? And so literally in the span of 20 minutes, everything was booked and I will be in Oklahoma City in January. Yeah. I'm not going to tell anybody Enjoy your else life. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that relationship even goes back to ORU. Oh, yeah. Yes. And you guys were just like real peachy and best friends when you first met, no, right? No, no. See, that's, yeah, we did not like each other. We lived on the same floor at ORU and we knew of each other because we played competitive ball. She was just an 86 and I was an 87. Uh, but we had the same coach. Um, but yeah, we weren't really too keen on each other in college, but Mike invited. Mike is an ex now, so forget I said that name. Uh, first husband invited Trevor and I over to the apartment to hang out. And I don't even know what prompted that. Um, but after that, it was like, she's been my best friend since 2005. And Aww. I joke that she's my soulmate, but... If I, I, that sounds gross. I mean, it's people get offended that it's not Trevor. And I'm like, listen, like Trevor's my husband. I love Trevor. We have something that's unbreakable, but that is my woman and I am her <laughs> woman. And if something ever happened to Trevor, we would be married and it would be like a platonic, like <laughs> friends marriage. We joked about it, but we're actually really serious. We would both do it. <laughs> Neither one of us have that preference. Like, that's not that's not it at all. Like, a lot of people don't understand it. But it's like, no, like, that is that is my woman. And I she's the only reason I stay sane and don't run off to another island a lot of the time. <laughs> Just run off to see her. Right, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I'm about to bounce. You're not going to see me for a while because I'm about to be done with all of this. And literally, you will see me in St. Kitts. I don't know. But, like, she will talk me down off the ledge a lot. A lot of the time. You know, one of the reasons we started this podcast and kind of the idea we came up with of interviewing people that – whether you like it or not, are successful and have started their own businesses and are doing things, you know, we're not talking to some rich guru that goes around and gives speeches and tells you, you know, it's you just got to do this, this, and this, and you're going to be successful. Like, we're talking to real people, and you guys got your real struggles, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's it's not easy. You know, there are hurdles, but it's all doable. And, you know, we just want to, like, put your story and other people's stories like you out there just for inspiration for other people that are on the fence, mm -hmm. you know, and thinking, I can't do this. But, uh, you know, we just want to give you guys that platform so maybe other people can hear it and just make that jump. Yeah. 
I appreciate that. And I feel like there does need to be more of a voice out there. And I feel like with social media, as bad as, you know, the negative effects that it's had, it's also had a lot of positive um, in that more people have a platform to say, you have other options. Like, I know that when we were kids in Claremore, Oklahoma, not a single person told us in high school that you, oh yeah, you can go run your own business and do all of this and you can it do this. It wasn't even an idea. Nobody told us that even that was thought. even a freaking option. No. No. My dad and uncle were doing it, but like I never thought about doing it, you know. Yeah, my dad was a lawyer with his own like law firm. It was like, oh, okay, that's a thing. It's like nobody even it's like puts that seed in there to be nourished. No. Like, oh my God, how the fuck do we know this? Yeah, nobody's like, you know, even though they're doing it, no, they're not like, nobody's just putting it in your head. Hey, don't work for somebody else. Work for yourself. Yeah. And that's what kind of makes me angry is I look back and I'm like, just imagine where we could be had we known all of that. We didn't go through all of that. Now, dude, absolutely. But now I can kind of look and say, okay, but without my experience as a manager and developing people and doing the things that I did, like I wouldn't be as successful in this now i would have had to learn a lot yeah i mean i think you definitely uh were able to use some of the jobs that you had to to springboard your success yeah. into this on your own and now i'm unhirable <laughs> unhirable or just or you just refuse to work for someone <laughs> i couldn't like i it's really hard to go back into that i can because i'm an adult and if i have to then i will just to jump back on that stuff, working for other people and stuff, you had, when you made that decision to come to leave your job there and leave Oklahoma, that didn't, you know, that didn't go over smoothly for a lot of things. Like you had a real bad experience with the job you were leaving. And I mean, you weren't leaving on bad terms, but they didn't really, they really didn't, didn't allow that to be anything other than that. Yeah, that's a whole. And, you know, looking back on it now, we won't name names, but we all know the name. Yes. Again, there was a lot of foreshadowing that now that I look back, it's like, okay, I was just on his good side. I was, I didn't see that side because I, I, did, I didn't need to. But, uh, again, I blame it on small town mindset. That's all that is. Absolutely. And that's, and, and I, yeah, I think that's such a, a good solid thing. Like so much of it is kind of rooted back to that small town mindset. As we said, is like nobody taught us or showed us that there is that way because small town, you're just going to be here mm -hmm. and do that for this person. That's, that's yeah. all there is to it. Or it's, Hey, you've worked for me. I, I did something for you by giving you a job and you, you can't leave. You owe me. Yeah. I think is more of what Shelby's getting at in that situation. Yeah. I mean, it was, um, small town mindset and political stuff that we all were privy to in the Claremore, even athletics. I mean, small town. <laughs> Political. Justin's dying over there over this name. He doesn't know the name. <laughs> we'll say after. I'm not dying. But I no, texted like, it so it let was me, silent. Let me just tell you this. Like, I left. When I left, it was on good terms. Now, I'm not on good terms with them now, and that's because of the way that they treat people, specifically the way, the way they handled my friend, specifically my how they handled my brother. And, you know, after I left, they really thought that I was some kind of, like, ringleader perception is you are a leader i which and now i look back on it and i appreciate that and i was like you know what though while they called us a click because we had our downstairs and those are the girls that i'm still best friends with um Boss they didn't like stuff. that they didn't like it and i was like you know but when <laughs> have you ever had six five or six women that can work in an office day in and day out and not have catty bullshit drama going on all the time and it be a toxic environment to me i'd never been in another environment but that's because we created that environment and that was a goal of ours but they it didn't work out that way and i left and i posted an article on my linkedin i didn't name names i didn't do anything 
say anything. And I was like, wow, this is really great. But it, it was along the lines of, you know, good people don't leave companies or positions, they leave bad management. And I wasn't specifically calling anybody out. So they took that as shots fired. Yes. And I was Small like, and I even had a conversation. I said, that's, that wasn't directed at you. That's been my experience for multiple jobs. Like I didn't say your name. I didn't call you out. I didn't do anything, but they perceived me, I guess, as such a, a leader or influencer in that company that they were afraid, I guess. You saying that would, would affect yeah. the work environment you left right. behind. And now I'm not rehirable which is fine <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going back i never will but what's crazy is the right hand man was found my tiktok recently so they still think of me <laughs> good right <laughs> did they reach out to you yeah he something? posted on my tiktok about emily and i was like i'm glad to see you still think of me and then i blocked him because I really, after everything that went down with her. But but Emily's not there anymore no. either. What would they have to say about Emily? Oh, that was a whole situation. And we look back at that now. And she it was devastating at the time. But we look at it now. And she makes twice as much money. She does less work. So many more opportunities. And she wasn't going to move unless something like that happened. But again... Her relationship with the person who um, that all of it went down with, um, that was a strained relationship, too, because her and I both are not yes women. Um, We're both going to speak our mind um, in the most professional way possible. But just because you're an owner or just because you're a man or just because whatever or just because you're an owner. Like, I'm not going to just say, oh, yeah, yes, let's just do that. Yes. No, you're not in my role every day. Let's talk about it. And we would talk about it. And that wasn't perceived well either. And I can't tell you how many times I was the accounts receivable. So glorified, you know, billing, bill collector. Um, but I worked hand in hand with the sales force. And I was called a bitch constantly. And I'm like, and they would read into things like my emails. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that I'm stating facts here, but not one single part of this had any name calling or anything like that. Like I'm stating my side in my case, and this is where my, I'm at. I was a bitch. And I was told, I don't know how many times. The, and that's where everybody says that, that doesn't exist anymore in the corporate culture. Women have the same opportunities. Women get to do this, this, that, and the other. The owner and any of the men in higher offices had every ability to come in and have a conversation and yell and get mad and storm out. When I did that, when I raised my voice just a little bit, I was a bitch, you need to calm down you're being too emotional. You need to quit. Like, and so now I've embraced that. And I'm like, I mean, I've been called a bitch my whole life. It is what it is. <laughs> well, that's, that's something that I wanted to get into. Like you had said it as like bitch, but it's, it's more of those you're getting a label based on misogynistic, misogynistic sort of filter. Yes. So it's not that you're being a bitch yep. as much as you're being a strong individual. Yes. I'm very strong, assertive, Assertive as a woman is not the same as assertive as a man. And I, it has been my experience. I know that's very difficult for others to understand. But I, even to this day, do not sign my emails with Shelby Lofton. I sign them S. Lofton. And that's because you can think that I'm Steve. And a lot of times it's, I mean, there's been multiple studies and other articles out where people, yes. change the, the women will change their names to Male yeah, name. I've read those as well because yeah. I, I work in a very women strong. Like I am the minority in yes. the, what I'm doing as a recruiter in healthcare. Like there is, I am one of two other guys on my team, and we have a team of sixteen. So it's all women, right? Like, it's just predominantly women. And like one of the things that I had read is those same articles that they had changed their name, that they had not given their first name because the response that men get 
is completely different or the unknown name is rep- completely different than if you're like, oh, it's Shelby, Jessica, Stephanie. If I know you're a woman, well, me personally, it's different. But like, if they right. know you're a woman, like they're going to respond more like, I need you to bow down to my ways because – you're a woman. Yeah. And so that's where it goes back to that, like the word bitch into how you pre- presented it, represented yourself in that whole business side. It's not fair. No, it, it, it's not. And that's kind of the thing. I won't get offended by it anymore. When you say that, like, I know, again, a lot of people are like, oh, that doesn't exist. It's 2021. That doesn't happen anymore. I've, I, as an AR manager, I had to have those hard conversations with paint contractors And I had those men tell me, I'm not going to speak to you because you're a woman. You need to get a man on the phone, a man that's in charge. And I had one say, you're just a bitch. Like it was one of my last few calls there. He's like, you're just being a bitch. And I was like, okay, thank you. I'm the bitch in charge. Now that's not relevant. Let's talk about your bill and and move on from that. The fact that I didn't have like a huge emotional response to him calling me that really changed the tone of the entire phone conversation because he didn't have that power to use. Yeah, yeah, because he felt like by taking that approach with you, it would somehow give him a leg up mm-hmm. in in what was going to happen next. Right, and as soon as I said. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Moving on. I'm in charge. We're going to handle this now. And you can talk to me or no one at all. And I'll take you to court. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it does. It is still 100% prevalent. Is it all men? I don't know that it's all men. But I know that it is a lot. Because it is something that I still deal with to this day, especially being in the trades. No, it's very true. It's, it's wildly truthful. I can't even... Like my mom calls or called so many people bitches and so many women would get offended. And she's like, God, like we're all bitches together. Like she tried to empower the word bitch to not mean negative or being like like a name calling thing of which a lot of men would do like, Oh, you're a bitch. She'd be like, nah, bitch, we bitches. Mm -hmm. Like it's a whole different thing of like, we just, we're not going to bow down. We're going to be strong women. But if you want to call us a bitch, fuck it. We're all bitches and go fuck yourself, bitch. Right. So- <laughs> I've, even, I've created a brand that I've not really launched yet because I'm still working on. Um, but it's all about just embracing that. And I know a lot of people think like Megan and Cardi are gross and all of that. But I'm like, Megan and Cardi, and especially Megan, to me, she's like, Okay, and... Are you talking like Megan the Stallion? Megan the Stallion. And, okay. <laughs> Megan the... You're using these short-term lingo verbs. Yeah. Yes, Megan the motherfucking Stallion. And Cardi B. We we have some... some Definitely have had some varying conversations on this topic right here. I agree 100%, but I'm kind of on Cookie's side in that. This is yeah. a way to use that and empower and say, yeah, okay, I'm an, yeah. I'm an assertive, yes. strong woman. You don't like that? That's fine. No, and I, I agree with that. Like, I'm 100% on board with that. Mm-hmm. I think when you take it into other areas, I don't think you're getting the same results necessarily that you're hoping for. Not yet. That's just my opinion. But I, I, I feel like... Not yet. I feel like it's to some degree almost a so i want to i want to compare it to protesting versus writing when you protest you can send your message out Mm -hmm. but when you riot nobody remembers the message they just remember the riot and i feel like your background being that you were at the christian school for a long time you very much understood and were a part of purity culture and that whole no, I, I don't and- I don't Sorry. I don't know. I'm on Shelby's thing because I just learned only two weeks ago that he came from yeah. Christian school. I swear to God to you, I did not know he did not come from anywhere else. I, I, I thought he came from anywhere else beside Christian school yes. up until yes. middle school. So a lot of your things are 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 rooted in purity that purity culture. But here, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is why I disagree with you guys a little bit here because I love it. I, I went to Claremore Christian until sixth grade. After that, I went to your formative year. Uh, yeah, 
what well, my form <laughs> of you. I don't. <laughs> then you met me. <laughs> I don't feel like I have a strong base of, of, I've never felt like I've had a strong base of who I was from that. Not necessarily from that, but I will tell you that growing up in the Bible Belt, especially, and as religious heavy as our area was, we were 100% taught purity culture and I don't even buy into virginity anymore either. And virgins are more expensive and all of, or, you know, more value, whatever, like that whole thing dating so far back before religion even started, like religion. And that is what has driven our ways of thinking today and you can look back at these societies that really revel in women's sexuality and all of that. And why, again, it even goes so far as to why is wearing a thong bathing suit mean that I am, I'm less respectful? Like you shouldn't, you should respect me less because I'm wearing a thong. Like that's a whole culture. Did you see that whole video where the, where the one uh, family gentleman was like, oh, hey, she's wearing a thong and you have to cover up because my kids, my kids something, something else. It's like, this no, is my problem. No, that, that guy is the douchebag in that video. He just doesn't know it. Well, I mean, that's the thing though. Like, He totally is because like he's making an issue out of something. But that's where that, we're coming from in a sense. Yeah, no, like, no, that no, is where I, we're I know, breaking but, away from. But Justin, I think you you should be able to back me up here. And my views on things today and the, I think you called me a unicorn the other day. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I'm not like my, my views today are not like some purity culture views. Yeah. No, no I, don't, I don't associate no. you with him. Like not at like, all. And I'm not saying that you are either. I'm just saying that there is an entirely misogynistic patriarchal society and system that we have grown up with that literally does not emphasize women's sexuality and our sexuality is pushed down in a way and we are bad i mean it is like girls can can't have a body count we all know how that is guys can go whore around we can't we can't have a body count. You can't. Those are all double standards that are really just now changing. But as a high school person that lost my virginity and I thought I was a whore because I did it, it's like, no, that's that I should have never felt that way. And women shouldn't feel that way. And a penis does not degrade my value as a human. It doesn't, period. And me wearing a thong to go to the beach because I feel confident and look good in it does not degrade me and my respect that I should get as a human being. It doesn't. But there are women that still internalize that and will beat us down for it. And then there are women that like, oh, you need to be modest. Well, where did we get that from? Where did we get that? You need to dress modestly because men will rape you. You need to dress modestly because you need to you need to worry about what that man over there is thinking about. That's not my problem. That's not my responsibility. But that all stems that all stems from religion. Yeah, the basics of that. That's how I feel as well. Is that it all stems from that religion aspect of like the women are wrong or you're wrong. But then at the same time, these these priests are still touching kids. Yeah. So it's like, Gross. well, okay. Sorry for just being a distraction on the beach right. well and that's the uh, thing like uh, how does that make there's sense? a time and place for everything and i've been taught that forever i know that i can't wear club wear to a networking event i know that that's not what i'm going for but if i'm going to a club yeah. then i can wear my club wear if I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Like if I'm going to. out, I should be able to go out and dress however that I want to dress. Just because, and for me, being a bigger woman, I don't look good in a lot of these fashions. And I've never looked good. And I've never fit into the low raised jeans. And I've never been able to do a lot of the trends that happen. But I don't look good in big flowy box dresses. I look like a freaking potato. And so <laughs> I wear <laughs> fitted clothes. And I'm always going to wear <laughs> fitted clothes because that's what looks good on my body. But that is even seen that is even seen as a threat to some women. 
And that is even seen as me um, not being appropriate at times. So I just want to address some of the things you talked about uh, in that. Um, great stuff, by the way. Thanks. But I agree that whatever your body count is, uh, you shouldn't be attacked over that or judged for that. I mean, that's your business. That's your life. That's your choice. Right. You know, what you wear, you know, those are choices. You shouldn't be, tr you should never be treated like less of a person for the choices you make. Mm -hmm. Like I a hundred percent agree with all that. And I think that, but when you talked about other women and here's like, we all should be allowed to have opinions should we share those opinions with other people or or come at those people no like that that shouldn't be acceptable that mm -hmm. that's ridiculous and social media has made that a whole lot worse agreed cuz anybody can get on here and say something to on a keyboard that they would never say to somebody's face yeah i i totally agree with a a lot of you're saying but i i also think that because a woman views something a different way than you doesn't make her the bad guy or wrong. I just think that's her preference. Now, how she deals with that right. towards other women is what makes her r wrong, right? right? The way she treats you is is wrong. Right. But we all have preferences. If you're a guy and you don't want to be with a, a girl that slept with 40 guys, like that's your business. That's your preference. As right? long as you hold yourself to the same standard. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, even if you want to be a hypocrite, right? Like, right. even if you want to be a hypocrite, like that's your right to be. The difference is you don't get you don't get to come at other people, right? You don't you don't need to treat them like less of a person. Like, if she's not for you, you can be like, hey, you know, like that's cool, live your life, do you? But that's not what I'm looking for, right. and that that is where we should be yes. at, rather than like, okay, well. I don't, Slut but I think shaming, we're, I think, I think it's way. because we're in a, a, a time where one group is trying to break away from something mm -hmm. and you got some people that are trying to hold them into that. And then you got other people that are just over there like, Hey, you know, I, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. But I feel like because they're so far apart in each way, I feel like you got the side that's trying to break away and then the side that's trying to hold, like hold them back into that are just like going at each other and it's you know so you're trying so hard to break away it's like well if you don't think this is right then you're wrong right like you know and i think it shouldn't be about that it i think it should be more like that's your life live it you know that's if it's right for you it's right for you yeah and I, you know i'm with you on the like live and let live because i have friends that are not comfortable wearing certain things and to me it's like that's fine you wear whatever you're comfortable in i'm gonna do me you do you i think that the problem is a lot of people feel like they need to put their two cents in that it, it doesn't matter it's not affecting you negatively and that's kind of one of the things that i harp on it's like oh i see a woman with a a uh, skimpy bathing suit on and my kid sees and asks about it. Well, number one, odds are slim that your kid's going to ask about that unless you make it <laughs> something in your household that's a relevant topic constantly. But, you know. Yeah, and I think it's a mistake to be modest within your household. Yeah. And that's just my opinion. But, like, to be modest around your kids. And, you know, when they were little, uh, me and my ex-wife showered with them. Yeah. We're still naked in front of you, Walk around in her underwear. Like, I walk around in my boxers. Like, you know, that's just, um, you know, if you walked in front of my kid and your ass was out in that bathing suit, they probably no. would not think twice and of I it. Because that is not made. Be negative. They have not been. You're creating that negative. It, yeah, view. it's not been. It's not been made to be, to right. be anything, really, honestly. Like, it's only something exactly. if you make it something. And I think that we have to do better. So we only have our life experience. And my life experience was sex and sexuality and orgasms and masturbating. And all of that was taboo. It was not something you talked about. It was not something that was okay. It was like, keep it to yourself. You're a kid. Don't do it. You're a teenager. Don't do it. Especially don't do this. 
you know, our sex ed didn't teach us really anything about it. And it's like, why though? But why? So it's an interesting. I was, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Like I took a lot of human sexuality classes in college. Like I swear to God, yes. I could probably get a human sexuality degree over marketing mm-hmm. in like one class because I was definitely introduced to uh, just that sort of things that you guys are doing now. Like I personally don't have kids as you guys do, and you're able to kind of expand those things. So I'm more of like listening more than I have my own experience to share on it. But my own experience in life was heck, you know, I discovered myself, but I was like, Hey, um, yes, here is this, that that's, that's what's happening. Right. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Because I found that magazine in, in your bathroom. So right. <laughs> you, sh- you help me figure the fuck out what I'm doing. right What now. is going because on here? Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, for like my life experience, I was like, a whore for doing the things that I did. And then I look back on it now and it's like, no, all of that was perfectly normal behavior. All all of it was. Which is wild. Right. And I would have been more safe about it had I had more education on it and had somebody really sat me down and said. I had a good understanding of just like, here, here's the whole thing. We're humans. This has been going on for hundreds of thousands of years. Normal. Um, this is just kind of what we do, but right. we we're all in this brought up in this culture that it was like, whoa, 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 wow. We're not gonna I cannot that. believe you showed like the left side of your butt cheek before you were 27. Like uh-huh. you slut bag. Right. It's like, whoa, I was running around naked in Batman costumes before I could buy alcohol. Yes. Like- <laughs> so, and I'm like there to me. So to me, it's like, I'm trying to do better for a case in so that he has that education before he's even I mean, not ready for it, because I feel like you have to do things age-based, obviously. Correct. But he will never Mm -hmm. not be able to talk about that stuff with me. Or Trevor. You're not creating that negative energy to be Mm -hmm. like, oh my god, you see that? Don't look, don't look. Because that's kind of where it is, like, as I experience just as me not having kids, and I see other parents, other people try to... uh, restrict their kids from things it's like they're living based on your reaction if you react to them showing that that's negative they're going to just recreate that reaction Mm -hmm. they're not like you can literally do it your own way and if you're going to be like oh man a butt cheek is bad that's how they're going to just think butt cheeks are bad it's It's like kind of like i love butts yeah i love butts but it's like seeing dicks at the passage key it was like (laughs) that is a naked dick week well i'm a little uncomfortable at the moment so like I mean, like, I'm not ready for this right now, but that was also because there was an inappropriate man putting sunscreen on his, (laughs) too. And I was like, well, bro, we got to get out of here. Like, there's. (laughs) Well, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. I'm I'm never comfortable just seeing dicks. Is anybody? (laughs) No. (laughs) If it ain't mine, I'm not comfortable seeing it. No, that's the thing. But now I will say, like, we, but even in that reaction, I was like, dude, that guy's naked. And yeah, and Kaysen's seen Welcome old lady's titties out there. And I'm like, yeah, her boobs are out. Like, those are boobs. That's a wiener. Welcome. That's what they feel like doing. If you feel like doing it, it's not appropriate right now. Time and place, bro. But if that's what you want to do later, go ahead. Yeah, when you're 18, you can do whatever you want. Right. Uh, so it's kind of the same thing. It's like, uh, but there's a lot of people that would be really negatively affected by that and would really have a negative response where I'm just like, live and let live. Thank you for listening to part two of our interview with Shelby boss, Lady Lofton. This is the Bloodthirsty Salamander Experience signing off. See you next time. <laughs>